So we're gonna check out what the performance is gonna be like on two 4090s, and man, these are huge. I'm not sure they're gonna fit in this uh, rack very easily. Now, we won't be able to load the largest size Q8 at a uh, high precision. We're gonna add these onto the comparison sheet, and these are just gigantic cards. I mean, look at the size of that. Compared to the 3090, wow. These are massive, and they generate tons of heat. But how are they gonna perform? Let me know what you think in the comments below about how these guys are gonna compare to the 3090s for doing inference work in Llama 3.1, Oh no, this isn't. So you would need to be making some modifications from the modifications we had already made if you were gonna have this fitting in here. That is something that I didn't factor in. And since this is probably not gonna be the permanent cards I have in here, I'm gonna do something to try to just get it good enough for now. So I'm gonna actually, this is very unconventional and incredibly temporary. They're not gonna stay like this but I'm gonna actually mount them standing upright like this. I've got a directional fan that I'll be plugging in. That way I can blow really concentrated Vornado like a little thing on it. Uh, this is very weird. Um, so definitely you'd have to do a lot of modification on this rack if you wanted to fit the 4090s in. Very similar to like how I had to modify it to get the 3090s happy with their placement as well. So I think this next one here, I've got just enough room for. And I will say one thing, this might make it actually a little bit easier on me from the perspective of how I was gonna be getting the power over to these. I was a little bit worried since there's not a lot of top support with uh, curling over the power connector on them, but now I think they'll come over and drape over this line just fine. So I finally got this all put together. I brought over the Bornado, which will put some actually pretty decent airflow on them. And this is unorthodox, but also I didn't want to make any modifications to this particular rack. I'm thinking of some different ideas, possibly even doing some custom fabrication for building something here. But before then, let's get this test underway and see what these two can do. We're going to go ahead and just continue in this chat window. And it'll take a second for it to kick up. All right. And that is surprisingly not that fast. Just 18.49. So the difference from two 3090s to two 4090s, quite a bit smaller. Check in the description below for the link to the sheet that uh, lists all of these differences. Pretty useful for people out there that are deciding on what they want to uh install or do themselves, have it write me a program that generated fractal, still 18.28 seconds on that one. And we'll come back and get the 4,000 word story about a pirate. And you can see the uh, power usage on these looks like it's about 50% and 48% on those two GPUs respectively. About 90 and 95% of the RAM utilized. And one of the commenters told me that I need to try VLLM. That should be pretty cool. I have not seen what I thought was going to be like a 100% performance on these GPUs. VLLM is something I'm going to test really soon here. Just to see whether or not uh, Llama CPP, which is what's under the hood of Olama here, versus VLLM, if there's a performance difference that is uh, quite large. And we're at 18.3 on that one. Very, very small gain that we're seeing on this. We're going to go down to a smaller size, though, that will fit inside just one GPU. And we'll see what that performance looks like. We've got a lot of GPUs left to test out also. And there have been some suggestions for some unusual combinations. So... Strongly considering that. And it was 18.42 seconds on that one. So that is some surprising results uh, that I didn't necessarily think we were going to see. Oh, there it is. There's the 8B FP6. There we go. FP16 8B, which is about 16 gigabytes or so. Paying about 50.53 uh, tokens per second. 49.74 tokens per second. It ran for only about 
25 seconds. We can use a formula and determine how many watts that query took. And we're going to be doing a lot more of that kind of stuff here. I'm trying to universalize some of the measurements so that we can evaluate things across a spectrum of different devices. 49.92 seconds. And one of the things that I actually am going to go ahead and do is just uh, grab the Llama 3.1 normal. That's the 8B. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I think we will be able to run that in quite a few different rigs. That'll probably be our base level Llama 3.1 latest. All right. That was a 109 tokens per second for that. We were going to go ahead and have it write the program for fat fractals here. 110.29, 109.94. And I do like the fact that for such a small model, it's able to go so fast. It'd be maybe a way of life for a lot of people. Let me know what your preferred parameter kind of cutoff is. Or maybe just your preferred VRAM size. That's actually more useful. 110.21 tokens on that one there. 3090s do kind of come out to be for where we're at right now. A really decent option still, in my opinion. And so one of the questions that people have been asking is, how do, does it perform if you mix things together? Granted, there's still the VLLM thing that I need to do some research on before I can answer. But I brought out this guy. It's a uh, very old 1070 Ti. So we'll test the 1070 Ti in combination with the, this is funny, in combination with the 4090. So we will have from Pascal all the way to Ada. That should give us a pretty good idea of if there's a performance impact to be had, how bad it is. I, I'm going to just guess. It's got to be bad. So I hope you've been having a good time testing out some of these GPUs with me. Just released a video on a five card and four card configuration the other day. And you can find that in the channel history. Of course, setup guides, build guides, and also me running some testing is something that I'm doing now. And like I mentioned, we're going to get into the use cases around this and some practical application. That's one of the big things that uh, after we get done with testing GPUs and setting up a super duper low end, a medium end, uh, I'm going to just call this the bigger end for now, but I do have plans that are crazy. So, uh, all right, so let's get the uh, blast from the past. Pascal Generation GT 1070 Ti. All right, now we've got our 1070 added in here with the 4090. All right, and as weird as it is, we've got our 1070 and our 4090 combination. Let's... uh. Let's give this weirdness a, a roll here. All right, Code Stroll will get the test here. Okay, and it's off, which uh, I got to say, actually, I think this is fairly decent performance. Let's check and make sure the CPU is not uh, cranking away over here. Nope, is not. So definitely being fed from the two GPUs. And uh, I was actually quite responsive. So 17.76 tokens per second, and that was with a 4090 and a 1070. We'll, we'll try the 1070 just by itself just to see what it can do. Maybe throw in some random other Pascal cards, but it looks like you can, you can mix and match. And uh, I wouldn't call it useful, but you can mix and match if you wanted to fit a larger uh, program into memory. And that one came in at 19 tokens per second. And that's 18.27 tokens per second on that. And let's get this final one here. And that is 17.87 seconds. And so we've got the 4090 removed. And we're going to go ahead and just test out the 1070 Ti, last from the past, by itself and see what it is capable of processing at, at probably a 8B model. Let's issue the warm up command here. Oh no, I'm still in code stroll. That's, that's not going to work. Okay, so now that we've got the Llama 3.1, that should fit inside the VRAM footprint. And when you hit regenerate, it should change the name like we just saw it do right there. Oh, okay. It's already generating it. Okay, cool. 29.51 tokens per second. So at, at an 8B, you're still going to be doing pretty darn good here. Now, it's staying pretty high. That's uh, 44... 
Yeah, that's 44 watts that it's using right now, just kind of not in an active state. We'll see if that slows down here. It does eventually drop down to a respectable level. And so this kind of brings up, I think, an interesting potential. If somebody has a couple of old 8 gigabyte cards laying around, you've probably got yourself a 16 gigabyte footprint. There's some interesting things that you might be able to fit in that. And the speed that I'm seeing here looks pretty decent. 28.86. Now, is it instantaneous? No, but is it usable? Yeah, uh, kind of crazy. Uh, let me know what you think about that. And 28.81 tokens per second there on that. Also, overall, 29 tokens per second is pretty fast. Let's take a look at what I think are the conclusions that stand out to me. So first and foremost, let me say also, uh, I've got to learn more about the uh, VLLM setup. But the biggest surprise, and I think this was pretty surprising to most of the people today, was the 1070 Ti doing actually pretty good at an 8B. Granted, that's quant 4, so that's going to have accuracy and precision issues. Your context might be a little choked on some things, but it was actually pretty darn good. I was actually quite impressed with this, the 1070 Ti. Second biggest takeaway, we were absolutely able to mix a single, and probably we could have done it with multiple if we had them, uh, NVIDIA 4090 and 1070 Ti. That's a 24 gigabyte and an eight gigabyte, and that's a Pascal and an ADA. Vastly different, but it did work. And that was on the driver 5.535, which is from NVIDIA. Now, the third takeaway, is that 4090s, in my opinion, uh, at least from what I was seeing here today, and this is totally something you tell me in the comments below if I am mega missing something here, but I was not blown away by their dual performance. And I don't know what to say other than, I mean, yes, they can go pretty wicked fast if you're looking at the FP16 for the 8B. Uh, but aside from that, I really, I, I was not blown away at the 70 with just two. And compared to the price being almost double, which means you could get two 3090s for about the same price as a 4090, I think that's an interesting thing to think about, honestly. We're going to do a lot more testing. And as you can see, we've got uh, Quadro cards. We've got some Teslas even in here that I haven't tested out. That one's coming up really soon. A lot of people have these popular little Tesla P4s and we'll have some information around what that is able to handle. But again, Pascal generation, so should be able to handle something. But yeah, I, I think that is uh, the takeaway from today's testing. We're gonna have quite a bit more GPU testing underway. And when we do, you can be sure that it'll be on this channel. So I hope you all are having fun. Make sure to hit like and subscribe, and I will check you guys out next time.